welcome to this video. It is way overdue time to repot my dendrobium. Patricia van Pooyenbroek, look at her, <laughs> has already matured the two growths of the season. And this orchid does grow more growths during the winter. And well, yeah, this should have been repotted probably about maybe two months ago because it was growing these new roots down here that have greened up nicely during the CalMag soak. But I'm going to repot it anyway because needs must. I'm not waiting another winter while it is in bark. I got this orchid in September of 2021. I've been babying it over the winter season because I always wait for the right timing when it comes to my weather at this point in time. I used to repot orchids regardless of the season. Their season is what determines what I do with an orchid, especially when it comes to repotting. So she is still in active root growth. I'm going to take advantage of that. Plus, we are in the warm season of the year as far as temperatures are concerned. And I'm going to be putting her into lava rock. So I appreciate your time, your company. There will be a few tips with regards to lava rock, self-watering, or if you were to do lava rock with a pot that has ventilation holes, that works as well. So do not be put off by the setup. Think of the media and think of what it can do for your orchids and how it can be grown. We'll go through all that. And let's have a good little sit down and a good chit chat. Know that throughout the video, if you have any thoughts or anything that you might be thinking of while I'm doing it, start with your comment, with your question, with your thought and keep editing as the video goes on. And then we'll see what the outcome is. Maybe I've covered some of the thoughts that you've had, some of the questions. Maybe I haven't, and every question is valid. The variables in the orchid hobby are vast, and I would like to make sure that everybody feels that they have been addressed regardless of where they live and how they grow. So having said all that, yes, this orchid has been with me almost a year. <laughs> I'm only doing the repot now, and so she's pretty pot bound, and she's got roots growing out of the base of the pot. That's not a problem, even though it branched. I think we're going to be okay with getting her out. The pot is pretty flimsy. My at first attempt will be, can I just pull her out without the squeezing? Nope, that's not possible. So we are going to do a little bit of pot surgery. Let's see if we can just cut into the top part of the pot and dislodge a little bit there. If we've cut too deep, we will soon find out if we've cut roots off. Of course, the intention is not to cut roots off, but this is the weakest part of the pot, she says. Maybe the first cut was the fluke. Because what I would like to do afterwards is get some scissors down and just cut straight down into the pot and wedge it out that way. So if you're curious about why I'm using lava rock with this orchid is first of all, I've only had her a year and I don't know her that well to understand how her roots operate. I find that dendrobiums are very, very good to grow in lava rock. You can rarely make a mistake growing dendrobiums in lava rock, which is awesome. And that's what I would like to make sure is that as I get to know this orchid better, how her roots function, what her preferences are. Lava rock is a very, very easy option. In my case, I will be growing her in lava rock and self-watering, which is another thing that I will be addressing later on as to how I make that work, because lava rock is known not to have any wicking properties. So we've gotten this far. Can we wedge her out now? Does that make any difference at all? Here she comes. Yay! Gave me a lot more flex getting that frame off. This is a pretty sight. Here's the thing, since she's been with me, Clearly she is in some great quality bark. It hasn't even begun to degrade. That is amazing. That is total credit and kudos to the nursery that she came from. I have been cultivating this orchid in a wet dry cycle. The media determines as such, especially throughout the winter. And now I'm going to put her into lava rock 
and self-watering. So what I've done, when she started growing new roots and I knew that I wouldn't be able to repot her in a timely manner to take advantage of the new root growth and then, you know, change her up into lava rock, what I did in the meantime was be very, very, let's say, heavy-handed in the watering as the new roots grew so that I could then already transition the roots while they were growing into the bark media but under very wet conditions in comparison to the wet dry cycle that the older roots had during the winter. I hope that makes sense. So while I always say never transition an orchid while she's still in the old media, you see that the orchid hobby does have exceptions and depending on how your life interrupt your schedule with what you should be doing with your orchids you can then use a new root growth time period to your advantage if you are going to change the media up from what the old roots are accustomed to by then watering more heavily and that way the velamen is already accustomed to a wetter environment and should not fail on you when you transition it into a wetter environment, a different setup. Of course, as you may be then just taking your orchid and putting her back into bark and in a wet dry cycle, the same principle doesn't apply because your setup hasn't per se changed, but you may need to water a lot more because any new media, bark, will not be as absorbing of water as any of the older established media was that the orchid grew those roots into. So you may need to make sure that you are still watering more often when you put your orchid into new organic media. So I hope that all makes sense. I had a few interruptions because of noise pollution in the background. But you can tweak your old setup that the orchid is in while you wait for life to give you the chance and time to be able to address your orchid and repot her by playing with how much water you're going to give the new roots as they grow, risking possibly the dying off of the old root system. But that may happen anyway because a transition can sometimes come at a cost of an old root system. But we always focus on the new root system anyway before we repot, at least hopefully, if all goes well and the orchid is fine and we don't have to do some form of emergency intervention. So when the new roots grow and we then decide we are going to change the media and set up, we can start focusing on providing a similar kind of environment for the new roots to grow into and basically start transitioning the orchid while she's still in the pot. If you have any questions about that, I've done a video on Velamen and I'll do a follow-up video on Velamen as well because it is a super interesting subject in my opinion and maybe you would be interested in that video as well because Velamen determines pretty much, hmm, how do I put this into percentage? 60% of the health of our orchid depends on the Velamen and what we do in cultivation with our orchid depends on the Velamen. Maybe the ratio is a little bit higher, but I doubt that it's a bit lower than that. I doubt it. I'm sure that it is about 60%. So this bark here that she has come in, wow, I'm telling you, I could have left her another year. It is excellent quality. So rare to get a nursery that actually does their orchids justice while the orchids are still in their possession and doesn't just see them as a commodity to sell on and well don't bother with it because you know the new owner is going to repot anyway but hey the orchid may be, not be sold for several years and yeah we know what happens with organic media if it is in the pot for several years and then yeah you get an orchid that has dead roots not so in this case not so at all
so now as I'm picking away through this, what I'm also doing is taking like a mental, a mental note of what the root system is like. That includes texture. What does it feel like? It's firm. It's firm and wiry. So I take a note of that moving forward when I remember my orchid, not just the fact the year that I've repotted it. I'm going through and I'm really, really focusing on what is the root system telling me? Because apart from the fact that, you know, any orchid loves a wet, dry cycle, what about the lava rock size? When it comes to different size roots, different consistency of roots. In this case, I have an extremely wiry root system. It's very tough. You can see how it comes off the bark, hardly to my naked eye, damaging the velamen. The root system is also very, very fine, but it is not brittle. Some root systems are super brittle. They break just by, you know, touching them with a knife and you've already squished and damaged the velamen. This one isn't brittle. And it's a joy to work with because, you know, I don't feel as though I am harming the orchid that much. And it gives me great, let's say, courage for the future, how this orchid is going to perform in the lava rock size that I have prepared for it. And that would be small lava rock, let's say medium to small. So I'm looking at one and a half to two centimeter size chunks of lava rock for this orchid because of the fine roots. Just like with any other orchid, determining certain kind of media, and you can see how the bark is also different sizes. Here around the middle, I've got more seedling size bark. Whereas as the orchid grew, larger chunks of bark were added on the outside. And the same is with any other orchid. Small roots require a higher water retentive media, no matter the maturity of the orchid, if you don't want to be running behind and having to water more frequently than absolutely necessary. Because of course, an epiphyte will grow in any kind of media as long as we give it enough oxygen around the root system. But how much time have you got in your busy schedule? And are you going to be able to keep up with the watering needs of an orchid if you put it into, let's say, chunky bark or large lava rock or large leka? A little rule of thumb, in my opinion, is that the thinner the root system, the smaller the media should be. This way, you can definitely respect the amount of water this orchid will need in its active growing phase without running behind or forgetting all the media drying out on you so fast that because the watering is behind, you stunt the growth or the orchid is only absorbing what it can from the reserves it already has to work with. That is what I'm doing right now. I'm really getting a great, great feel for these roots. And to be honest, I'm loving it. <laughs> and in order to get these fine, fine little tricky bits off right here. If I want to be insistent, which I'm trying, I'm just, you know, feeling my way in. I'm not stabbing at the root. I'm going into the bark and then jiggling so that whatever pops off comes off without me actually going straight underneath, trying to find the tiny gap between the root and the bark. So pretty much I'm going just a smidgen as to where the root is and poking into the bark to jiggle it off. That's the plan. Now, because I've got new roots growing, I'm okay with being this picky. If I didn't have new roots growing and I wanted to maintain what I have cultivated up until now, then I would be less picky and I would say this big piece of bark can stay. My root system is super important, seeing as I don't have any new roots growing. But because of the new roots that are already coming again, thank you, this orchid is a treat, I am going to really do my best to get this bark out. As I progress forward and continue to dislodge roots that have grown around it, if I want to change my mind and say, nah, this is getting a little bit too close for comfort and I'm doing more damage than I had anticipated, I stop. 
change your mind during your repots you might start with a plan and then you think yeah no i've got to complete that plan oh no you don't you have time to change your mind and then do whatever feels much better comfortable even stop in between take a break if it's getting too tedious just stop the orchid's not going to run away keep the roots damp and then look around check your stash and see what you've got available and if you need to change your mind or your media then always feel free to do so i don't know about you but sometimes i have a one track mind and i remind myself at that point in time if i think of it that i am here in control and i can change the direction of where i want to go with my setup at any point in time until such a time that she's potted up and then of course we hope that we've gotten it right my one track mind can get in my way sometimes and then all of a sudden two weeks later i'm like no nah, why didn't i think of this sooner so over the years i've told myself as i look at the orchid as i have her in my collection prior to a repot i observe her i make my thoughts and all of that could go right out the window the moment i sit down and do what i'm doing now it, it's just like oh i wasn't expecting this <laughs> and then the direction changes completely. So we've got a lot of roots tangled up around this piece of bark. Incredible. It was a popular piece of bark, I can tell you that much. Winning. Winning. <laughs> Okay, we got access to some more. That's a nice root already growing on this piece of bark. Now it's at this stage I'm thinking how far do I want to go with removing more bark? Because at the end of the day it's going into, sorry if the camera just jiggled, I had King lie down at my feet. Because it's at this stage in my setup it's going into pure inorganic media meaning my media is not going to break down and having a little bit of bark around the existing root system it's not that big a deal even if it and when it degrades so my question now is do i really want to mess with this gorgeous root tip do i really want to mess with this gorgeous root right there yeah that's the question let's see what happens underneath it because if it's not that easy to get off it's gonna stay on there's this big chunk of bark underneath that root tip it's not attached to it but oh no oh no check this out I just broke the newest growth of this season right here. That's the first premiere. Okay, it's got roots growing down in the media. Where on earth did that break off from? Oh, right there. Okay. Look at that. And look at where it broke off from. How bizarre. Okay, now change of direction remember so what we're gonna do we're gonna leave it as is i'm gonna get the cinnamon out seal the wound it has roots growing it's a dendrobium we're gonna see if that growth deteriorates declines or if in true dendrobium fashion it's just going to continue growing because it already has new roots on the way change of direction well that was unexpected but we are in control Learned something new about this orchid? Feels tough, but it is not. Its growths are very delicate, even though they are mature. So I just put some water on my paintbrush so that I can keep the cinnamon under control instead of it going everywhere on new roots, for example. Okay, let's add some water here. 
Even though lava rock is so much heavier, it's not as buoyant as Lekka, it is still a much gentler method to get lava rock around the roots. Now, of course, I have now got to add a support. And I was going to crock this pot with some decorative clay that I got from Fernanda Nacimento Orchids and Succulents so that I won't be using up all my small lava rock, but this is now a different story. Before I make my decision whether I'm going to use that for crocking, I want to see how my orchid is going to be with the new growth up against the support. This orchid was not meant to have a support in the pot, but I have to do this just to make sure that I make that support steady. No jiggling. And that would do it. And for that reason, there is not going to be any crocking in this pot. Okay, we're going to work with that. This is about now getting the orchid to be safe and steady in the pot. That's a shame, but again, change of directions. No need to get flustered. It's just the shock initially. It's like, oh, what a bummer. Luckily, we're working with a very vigorous dendrobium as opposed to a diva bifoliate cattleya. Now it's to attach the growth to the support. All of this is fine. It's not ideal, but it's not going to in any way, shape or form affect how the orchid is going to grow for us moving forward. The growth may not bloom, the growth may not make it, it's fine. But if the growth takes and it then does make it, even better, right? Let's also position it back into how it was up against before we broke it important to try and respect what happened prior so that the roots that are down there will make it. I wonder if I jinxed it when I was talking about changing direction. <laughs> I like the media level that it's at right now. That isn't looking too bad. I'm gonna add a little bit more on the back here and then we're gonna drain her and see how the orchid responds to having no water. All right, let's give her a flush. Make sure everything is wet and if we can flush any debris out, that's even better. And put her in her mask. So now you're probably wondering, well, why is this working as a self-watering setup when earlier on you said that lava rock is not wicking? That is because lava rock is so porous and has so many nooks and crannies that it is not the wicking effect that makes it worthwhile for self-watering. It is the fact that there are so many nooks and crannies. And for that reason, it retains a lot of water and it takes a long time to evaporate. Meaning, you don't need the wicking effect if you flush a pot through and you have microfiber strands at the bottom or you just set a pot like this onto a saucer, even including ventilation holes, flush the pot through and the water in the nooks and crannies of the lava rock will create a wonderful environment that has a similar effect as Lekka might have with wicking. But the biggest advantage doing this with lava rock is that with some orchids, you need a wet dry cycle. Some dendrobiums prefer to have drier media around the roots during winter when they are resting. This is not one of those orchids. It is not a winter rester. It actually grows another set of growths during the winter. But because lava rock doesn't have any wicking, it is also not at risk of losing the wicking efficacy, meaning it doesn't have to stay as wet throughout the winter months as Lekka would need to be in order for it not to become a desiccating agent. With lava rock, you can let the media go dry to a degree. Not much. It's not like you can leave it dry indefinitely because the roots themselves, the velamen around the roots, is accustomed to a more moist, damp environment. So while we can keep the pot a little bit drier over the winter when it's cooler, we can at least flush it through and leave it be. It is not advisable to do so over an extended period of time. Regular flushing is still required, but it is much easier to manhandle the climate of the pot with lava rock because because lava rock also does not have any evaporative cooling. And then there's one final thought you may have noticed throughout this repot, I didn't cut off any roots. 
That is not because of anchoring. I would have been able to take off a few old dead roots that would have been perfectly fine. But when that growth broke off, a change of direction was needed. And it was not just about cleaning up an orchid and potting it up into a new setup and new media. It was about responding to what had happened and hopefully be able to save the broken growth and keep it alive, hopefully, until its roots are long enough to go in and absorb their own water so that we don't lose the growth. The rest of the orchid will be fine. I am not concerned about any dead roots in this pot. My main aim was to make sure that this growth doesn't get any more stress on it and that it becomes self-sustained by the way of its own roots and we don't lose it. Anyway, talk about throwing a plan out the window. I hope this was of interest and I hope that as you were watching, you were commenting. I'd like to see the flow of your comments, <laughs> especially when that cane went every which way but where it was supposed to be. Thank you so very much for your time. I really, really appreciate it. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already done so. A like would also be very much appreciated. Helps me out with the algorithm. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.